I've lived in Florida my whole life, and never once had I believed in an urban legend. Well, that was all about to change tonight. A small, close-knit group of friends and I have been planning a camping trip now for the past few months. Now, sadly, we live in Florida, so you can imagine our hobby isn't as easy as you think it'd be to achieve. And even though they call Florida the Sunshine State, it rains all the time. If you've ever been to Florida, you ought to know it rains practically eight months out of the 12 months of the year. So with summer ending and fall approaching, we took in stride the fact that we could finally go out to my favorite camping spot. Now this year, the rainy season had particularly been a crappy one as it lasted an additional month. But that wasn't going to stop us from going and finally enjoying some good old-fashioned outdoor time. And so me, Matt, Zach, and Josh all headed up towards the Everglades, looking forward to finally start our camping adventure. With haste in our step, me and my three close friends grabbed our gear and we headed out towards our Jeep. The four of us prodded and played with each other as we headed towards our destination. You know, standard guy talk, just shooting the shit and making fun of each other. The drive up to the Glades took us a little under two hours. We made pretty good traffic considering the snowbirds hadn't started flocking down here yet. What's the first thing you want to do when we get there? Asked Josh eagerly. I don't know, said Zack, but make sure you dinguses find me plenty of dry wood. As I plan to start the bonfire as soon as I can, I've got plenty of scary tales to tell you. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I plan to cook some curry over that fire, replied Matt. Willingly, we all agreed that the first thing we do once we got there was pitch our tents, and then we would search for dry firewood, as that was going to be our main entertainment for the first evening. If all went well and the weather stayed nice, this would end up being a three-day weekend. It was a quarter till four when we had reached the entrance to the campground. The parking area was scarcely empty, especially for this time of year. A whole heap of yellow caution tape acted as a barricade, keeping us from the entrance to the campgrounds. Jeez, man, what do you think happened here? proclaimed Josh. Eh, uh, I don't know, but we already drove here, so we might as well get out and look around, said Matt. Psh, last one out of the Jeep's a big fat chicken, exclaimed Zach. Upon exiting the Jeep, the four of us approached the entrance to the sealed campgrounds. There were a few new signs hanging from the posts. Beware. Stay out. Do not enter. Well, that's just freaking great, said Zack. Feeling a bit rebellious, I started to work my way between the lines of the yellow tape that were blocking us from the entrance. Josh nervously raised his voice. What are you doing, man? I lobbed a sharp glare at Josh, giving him the look that says, You know what I'm doing. Unfortunately, Josh's voice had echoed just loud enough to bounce through the trees around us to alert a local park ranger who happened to be just passing by the area. All of a sudden, a ranger truck comes pulling up full speed and slamming on its brake, slinging mud at the group. After a few rapid, angry taps on the horn, a big, burly man with a beard steps out of the truck. This guy had to be at least six freaking feet. He was a giant. He immediately approached us and raised his voice at us. Uh, excuse me, folks. What do you think you're doing? Matt quickly took the lead and made a blank expression on his face like he was a bit confused. And he goes, mmm, left or looking left and right. I don't know. We were uh, just trying to go camping, dude. The ranger responded with, I can see that. What do you think you're doing crossing those lines? At this point, I was rushing to get untangled from the lines I had started to cross over. Zach chimed in. Hey, uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure the campsite's usually open by this time of year. The ranger responded angrily. It was! As you can see from the tape, it's closed! I finally untangled myself from the yellow web of caution tape and joined the conversation. Look, man, I'm sorry. We're not here to cause any trouble. We were just really excited to start the season off at our favorite spot. If it really is a big issue, we'll leave. But do you mind me asking why it's closed? The ranger faced directly at me and then just squinted his eyes and said, Cougar attack! Josh quickly got nervous and responded with, Oh, well, hell no, I'm not sleeping out here if there's cougars out here. Quickly and quietly, in an order fashionly line, we descended into the jeep. After Matt turned the key over, he goes, Ah, oh, fuck! Well, now what are we gonna do? Josh cut him off abruptly. I vote we go home and just come back next weekend. We all sat silently for a moment, and then Zach chirped in. Oh, uh, no. I mean, I agree with Zach. We just wasted two hours driving up here just for some asshole to tell us we can't go camping. Matt began pulling forward and essentially gave the ranger the slip as he followed us out of the wooded area. We started driving down a dirt road for a while until Matt told everyone to buckle up. We had been to this spot at least a dozen times, so Matt knew his way around the area pretty well. He hung a sharp left and started going off-roading, following an opening in the trees. We spent the next 45 minutes traversing all kinds of treacherous terrain. We finally slowed down as we neared a trail we recognized. Matt parked the jeep, we all collected our gear, and we head set forth into the camping site. Hmm, you can't tell me where I can and can't camp, proclaimed Matt proudly. Nice job, my dude, I said to Matt as I slapped him a crisp high five. Zach butted in with, This is going to be really freaking sweet. We've got the entire camping site all to ourselves. Josh nervously asked, What if we see a cougar? Matt shot back, You fucker, dude. Cougars are just older ladies looking for some dick. 
The group shared a laugh and we all picked a spot to pitch our tent. From there we decided it'd be a good idea if we all split up and started collecting firewood. We decided why not have a little wager and have some fun with this, and we split into groups of two. Me and Josh went to the east, and Zach and Matt went to the wet. Whoever collected the most firewood wouldn't have to do dishes tonight. As me and Josh trekked around looking for decent sized sticks, we came across something concerning. It was a makeshift sign, and it read, Beware the Skunk Ape. Josh read the sign aloud and in the form of an open ended Beware the Skunk Ape? What, what the hell's a skunk ape? I let out a deep sigh and asked him in a comic relief style, Do you really not know what the skunk ape is, Josh? As he picked up another stick, he responded with, No, dude, that's why I freaking asked you. I then began to explain to him how the skunk ape was Florida's interpretation of the Bigfoot, the legendary cryptid that roamed the woods. Legend has it he roams these very woods, and you can always tell he's near because he reeks of a rotten dead skunk. Josh fell quiet and kept about ten steps ahead of me after me explaining the legend of the skunk ape to him. We had hiked about 400 feet away from our camping site when Josh stopped dead in his track. Josh just stopped and looked down at the ground. I quickly hustled to catch up with him, and then I stopped right next to him. I couldn't believe what I was looking at. There were bits of bloodied cloth on the ground next to bone. Whatever did this meant business. There was gnashes and claw marks all over these bones. Josh let out a mutter. Dude, fucking cougars out here. What are we doing? Relax, big guy. Just because we came across this doesn't mean they're still here. He snapped his head quickly, looking at me angrily. I swear to God, Dalton, if I get killed out here, I'm gonna fucking haunt you. That's fine. But do me a favor, don't bring this up to anyone else. We don't need to freak them out. We returned back to the campsite, and we set up the bonfire. At this point, the sun was starting to reach that beautiful peak of twilight, and the stars were starting to reveal themselves. Matt fired up the curry, and we all kind of settled in for the night. After we all had our fill, we agreed we would roast marshmallows. Only after Zack told us a scary story. <laughs> Alright, hang on to your dresses, ladies. This is what my grandpa told me. I'm going to tell you about the tale of the legend of the skunk ape. Right after Zack reached into a pouch sitting next to him and threw some flash powder on the fire to give it that magical crackle. I looked over and Josh was wide-eyed, gripping the stick for his marshmallows extremely hard. I elbowed him and said, calm down. So the skunk ape, also known as the skunkus apis, smells like rotten ass. You can smell it five miles away, it's like someone hit you in the face with a liquid diarrhea shit. And just like that, everyone was laughing, and Josh's fears had faded away. Some say this creature's a man in a suit. Some say it's a gorilla that escaped from a zoo exhibit. Some say it's been here all along. Rumor has it it's converted into become a carnivore, and it enjoys fresh meat now. They say the biggest giveaway to a skunk ape being near you is the smell of death in the wind. They banned hunting at night in the Everglades after a few people mysteriously went missing. And although there's no physical proof that it was the skunk ape that made those people vanish, they did find bones on their campsite and claw marks all over their equipment in the trees nearby. Out of all the legends I've ever heard, the skunk ape is the only one out of the Bigfoot family that doesn't mind the water. In fact, gators won't go near it because of how nasty it smells. <coughs> Matt popped up behind Josh and shrieked in his ear. Josh screamed and threw his marshmallow stick. Five marshmallows lay on the ground, ablaze, as Josh looked angrily at Matt. Josh expressed his anger. That's not funny, dude. I can't handle much of this stuff after what we found today. Zach cocked his head and raised an eyebrow and asked, What did you find today? Probably Narnia, because Josh is so far in the closet, scoffed Matt. You know what? Fuck you, dude. You're just mad because everyone thinks you're a homo because you shave your leg. The tension building around the group dropped when they heard something in the rush behind them. Everyone sat quietly for a moment, listening intently. Zack picked right up where he had left off, raising one eyebrow, saying, So tell us, what did you find today? I butted in a frustrated manner and said, Nothing. Josh raised his voice. So you call a bunch of shredded bones and blood stained clothing nothing, huh? Everybody fell quiet, and Matt broke the silence with just an, Oh. I followed suit by asking a follow-up question. What, did you guys find something too on your firewood truck? Well, now that you mention it, Matt said, pulling out his phone to show us a picture. It was a cooler with some kind of damage to the top and what looked like a bloody handprint on top of that. Quickly, I attempted to take control of the situation by explaining to everybody, this means nothing. All we know that there was some kind of animal attack. You heard the rangers. It was a cougar. Everyone still looked uncomfortable, so I followed up with, with that being said, cougars are nocturnal animals and do hunt at night. We probably should get to bed. As we motioned to pack up the supplies from dinner, and put away the marshmallows, Zack stopped everybody and said, Wait! Do you guys smell that? Everyone kind of looked around confused. 
Zach then proceeded to lift his leg and rip a huge fart. Josh shot back with, Oh my God, you're such a sick bastard. We all had a good laugh, and then we retired for the night into our tents. I passed out easily, but it's never been hard for me to fall asleep on a camping trip. Every now and again, I thought I'd hear rustling outside, but it didn't really stop me from catching any sleep. Eventually, though, I was woken up in the middle of the night. The wind was whistling pretty hard and was pushing a foul smell through the air. Not thinking much of it being as I was half awake, I just zipped part the window flap of my tent so that no longer airflow could push through. As for the smell, I chalked it up to one of the guys taking a shit close by and the wind happened to be picking up their bowel movement. Looking back now, I wish that's what it was. I was awoken once more, but this time to a blood-curdling scream. This time more alert, I grabbed my flashlight and I went to open my tent. What I saw to this day still leaves me questioning what really happened happened. I rushed out of my little dome to be met with two other flashlights beaming in my face. I held up a hand to cover my eyes as it was super bright and I asked, Dude, what the fuck? Sorry, my dude, Zach replied as he pulled the light away from my face. Quickly, we realized Josh was missing from this equation. The three of us shone our lights on Josh's tent and we were left in utter shock. His tent was slashed to pieces, speckled in red liquid. We can only assume it was blood. Dude, what the fuck even happened here? Asked Matt, frustrated and worried. Zach responded with, Do you think it was a cougar attack? I don't think a cougar would have done this, and even if it did, wouldn't we have heard it? Everyone agreed with me, saying that was a pretty decent point. We all shone our lights on the ground in front of Josh's tent, where we had noticed there was a trail. Whatever had attacked Josh had drugged something away from the area. Did either of you guys even hear anything? I asked, concerned. Both Zach and Matt shook their heads no, with a look of concern on their face. We started to follow the trail that led from Josh's tent. There was a long imprint in the sand with speckles of blood that were left behind. Something heavy was being dragged away from their campsite. No one broke our silence, but everyone could tell we were very uncomfortable and on edge, worried for the life of our friend. As we followed the trail, I picked up a distinct footprint. After shining my flashlight on it, I asked them both, Do you still think a fucking cougar did this? They could both tell I was frustrated and concerned. This was either a really fucked up event, or the greatest prank ever pulled. We all took a moment to really study the footprint. It was clearly from a large, bipedal kind of animal, but it had human-like tendencies to it. As ridiculous as it sounds, the best way to describe it was a big foot. It was like a really big foot. After showing Matt and Zach the footprint, Matt nervously offered to stay behind at camp in case, you know, Josh got away and had come back to camp. He didn't want him to show up to nobody. With a very serious look on his face, Zach turned around to Matt and said, I don't think Josh got away. Regardless, we can tell Matt was scared, so we decided to let him stay behind and guard the camp, and me and Zach trekked into the woods following the trail left. The farther we went, the deeper the brush got, and the more blood was left behind. Neither of us would say it, but we could both tell each other was thinking that it was highly unlikely that Josh was still alive. The trail ended abruptly once we hit a large patch of sawgrass. We scanned the area with our flashlights, only to notice something hanging from a tree nearby. Upon hiking through the sawgrass, we got to the... Well, we found him. It was Josh, all right. He hung from the tree by his entrails with a scared look on his face. What could have done this? Zach uttered in a shaky voice. My first reaction was to just straight throw up. I leaned my head to the side and... <laughs> Never had I seen such twisted imagery, let alone one of a close friend. Before I was even done throwing up, I heard a loud snapping noise from behind us. Zach and I pulled a quick 180 and turned around. We could see it in the distance. It was tall. It had to be at least seven feet tall. Without even thinking, I shined my flashlight right in its face. That was a big mistake. It stopped gnawing on what seemed to be Josh's severed arm and loud a humongous roar. <coughs> After releasing another roar, it started stampeding right towards us. I froze in place. Zach pushed me out of the way. Everything went slow-mo. As I watched Zach slowly fall to the ground underneath the weight of the creature, I saw a mouth to me. Run, dude. Fight or flight kicked in and I took off. I just kept running. I didn't think at all. I could hear Zach's screams of agony bouncing across the trees all around me. I finally made it back to the campsite, but there was no sign of Matt. I searched his tent. It was empty. His backpack, his wallet, his cell phone, all his personal belongings were gone. I felt defeated, but I couldn't blame him. If I was in that situation, after hearing those screams, I would have left too. Fight or flight, right? Speaking of fight or flight, I had another roar echo through the woods behind me. I decided my best escape would be to try to hoof it back to the jeep and hopefully catch up with Matt. With one last glance at Josh's tent, I decided there's no way I was going to be able to wait till daybreak. I started in a light jog, hoping if I kept up this pace, I might catch up with Matt. I jogged probably 20 of the 45 minute hike when I heard another roar in the distance. I just thought to myself, there's no way this thing's already caught up to us. I heard an altercation up ahead. It sounded like Matt. It sounded like he was still alive. I approached the location of the sound quickly yet quietly. It took me a few moments to focus with my flashlight being off in the dark at all. I stopped dead in my track. Not one, but two. 
two giant skunk apes. They had Matt trapped up in a tree. Ducked down behind a bush, and I looked for something to throw. I found a small rock, and I picked it up. I threw it in the direction I came from as hard as I could. It worked out as I hoped it would, because they both turned in the direction I had thrown the rock and took off towards it. After spotting me, Matt slinked down the tree, and we both took off towards the jeep. I had a stitch in my side from all the running. After what felt like an eternity, we finally reached the jeep. Matt unlocked it, and we both jumped in frantically. And just as he turned the engine, we heard it again. Another roar. I looked over in pure terror as a giant furry hand reached through his window and grabbed him by the shirt collar. I slammed my fist down on the lock mechanism right in front of me on my passenger side door. I lived up an alley-oop over the center console. I looked out the driver's side window, prepared to help out and help him. It was too goddamn late. This thing had him on the floor and was tearing at his insides with its teeth. With a deep, somber breath, I put the jeep in reverse. After backing up about 20 feet, I had a good view of the creature eating Matt. And then I floored it, and I ran that son of a bitch as hard as I could. Knocking it off Matt's corpse was enough revenge for me tonight. I pulled a K-turn and started back down the grassy path that we had taken earlier that day. Every now and again, as I passed the trees, I'd swear I hear another roar. Well, it's practically 6 a.m. now, and I'm almost at the ranger station. I'm a bit worried what they're going to say when they find out we trespassed even after they told us not to. Although anything they subject me to will be nothing compared to what my friends dealt with the prior night. The only advice I can give from tonight is stay out of the Everglades and beware the skunk ape.